Hello everyone and welcome back to the Sedona International Film Festival. I'm your host Carol Kahn. We are coming to you live from Yavapai College which is part of the Sedona campus and we would like to thank our sponsors Northern Arizona Healthcare and joining me now are two filmmakers Brenda and Mark from the film Dear Zoe. Thank you so much oh, for thank, thank you for having us. Or dear, Zoe? dear Zoe. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, thank Pleasure. you. We were just talking about um, they're from Sonoma. Yes, the, and, the other um, Sedona in yes. the wine country. <laughs> yeah, it is the other Sedona actually. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I kept saying how envious I am of them right now, even though I live here in Sedona and everybody's envious <laughs> of that. But I love wine country, so thank yeah. you for being here. Oh, this is a, a pleasure. We're so excited to attend thank this festival. Thank you for having us. For the first yeah. time, too. Oh, my goodness. I know. That Very is wonderful. Soon. That so is wonderful. So um, did you get to, like, see the snow coming in? or You know, we saw little patches, but we were driving from Phoenix. We just flew in and drove up here. And we've been here once, which was in October of 2020. But to see it today, it just you just, the, the views just open up and the color surrounds you 360 it's a, <laughs> it's absolutely magical you know it's, it's an amazing place yeah yeah well I'm glad that you're here and made it too yeah so it wasn't it wasn't too bad so it was no. pretty good it was pretty easy yeah he's a good driver <laughs> She's like, slow down. Yeah. It's like, no problem. Well, we're just thank you, Mark, for getting her here safely. Right. Which explains why we're a little late. We did the New York so, Times Crossroads. Sorry. Crossroad. That's okay. That's quite all right. All right. So talk to me a little bit about your movie. I think I've read somewhere that it was 11 years in the making. Is that correct? That is correct. So tell me, why did it take so long? Want to start off? Sure. Mr. Well, screenwriter. Yeah, no, no problem. So um, we were made aware of the book, Dear Zoe, in the fall of 2008. Um, the author of the book was interested in having his book, his beautiful book, turned into a movie. He and his wife happened to see our first feature production, which was the movie Bottle Shock. They'd seen it in the theaters in Pittsburgh, where they live and where I'm coincidentally in from in the fall of 2008 and they really loved that movie and he had a guy who was sort of like a, a film industry guy but who was living in Pittsburgh who was helping introduce him to some Hollywood people and he said to this other person hey do you know anyone involved in that movie Bottle Shock and the person he was talking to says let me think about that for a minute he says you know one of the producers and I started carpooling to school together in the third grade, and he was talking about me. So this is one of my childhood friends. <laughs> so so we total got, coincidence. We got <laughs> so we get introduced to the author of the book. Um, we were sent his book. We both read it. It's phenomenal. Fell in love with it. It's, it's a beautiful story. It's a 189-page letter. Yeah, the book is so interesting, which you know we'll talk a little. I mean, the whole story is really interesting. But bottom line is. He loved our movie, our first movie. We loved his book. We then arranged to meet. I was, we were going back to Pittsburgh for Thanksgiving that fall anyway. And so we met, we met him and his wife, and we all just hit it off and we agreed to make his movie. That was the fall of 2008. Uh, we immediately hired a screenwriter um, in Pittsburgh, a friend of ours. And um, at the same, and we thought, you know, within a year or two, we'd be making the movie. At the same time, Brenda and I were in the early stages of planning to create a very large film festival in Napa Valley, which had never had its own, a real yeah. world-class film festival. And we naively thought that we could both launch a major new film festival and keep producing movies yeah, was a bit nice. at the same time. <laughs> That's been Can't happen. <laughs> so the reason this has really taken so long is our last Napa Valley Film Festival was 2018. We worked all And we rooms. cleared our calendar completely for 2019 to prep for and ultimately shoot the movie. Thank God by the end of 2019 we got the movie shot. And then, of course, the pandemic has made it a much slower journey right. to finally be here to talk with you about finally showing oh it to gosh. a live audience. <laughs> so, and this is so exciting because all the testing we were doing, we were testing with friends and friends of friends and friends of friends and we had the, you know, objective questions. We had, you know, gave them a time limit to watch uh, the it movie. It all just sent on but the But it was all on a link. Mm -hmm. And we and couldn't be with them. We couldn't be with in a people. Theater. So this is going to be so scary. It's so exciting oh my gosh. to see people, to be in a theater with a live people that we don't know mm -hmm. and hear them laugh and cry and and, and 
respond to the movie. To the it's it's going to be an incredible experience on Saturday morning. Well, I can't wait, but we do have a trailer, so let's take a, a look at the trailer. We have a little clip, first. yeah. yeah okay, and this, is, this, this clip stars our lead actress, Sadie Sink, from the show Stranger Things, and it's a clip where she's going to meet her new love interest and also have a little interaction with her father, who she's living with for the summer in 2002. Okay, so let's take a look. I'm Tess. I'm Jimmy. That little unfriendly. Hi. So, Tex, you run a construction firm? That's your shitty truck out there with your name on it? Well, what are you driving, a Porsche? I'm not what you would call legal to drive. Well, how come? You're old enough. Let's just say the last time I got pulled over, if I'd have had my license, they would have taken it from me yet again. Well, see, if I ever get my license, I'm not going to treat it like some lame-ass boyfriend I'm not really into. Uh, you got me there. Come on. So, how old are you, Tess? 17. Well, 16, but uh, 17 soon. August 26. Is that why you wear so much makeup? <laughs> You're real smooth, you know that? I didn't mean it like that. I just meant you don't really need it, that's all. You want a beer? What? You heard me. Charles, you overpriced West Coast piece of... Hit the goddamn ball! It won't make any difference. Put it back. And tell him to get the hell out of here. <laughs> what? Dad, come on, he's harmless. Put it back. Dad! I don't want you hanging around with him. Why not? Because I said so. Well, what am I supposed to do? Just hang out with you all the time? Finally! Finally, he gets a hit! Yes! Uh, sure. Yeah. You want to sit down? You can hang out with Tinny and I and watch the Buckos? No. You can invite your friends over? They're from Murdoch Farms, Dad. They wouldn't be caught dead in Braddock. Dad! What's the big deal? Because your mom would freak out. I thought you were cool, but you're the worst! Why um, are you yelling? I heard all of that. I don't know what his problem is. Me? You trouble? That's your room? Cool. See you around, Tex. She is beautiful. She's beautiful. <laughs> she is a stunning actress, and she was the ultimate professional, just always on. And, and just think about the, the filming conditions. This was October and November in Pittsburgh. It's freezing. And this was the, supposed to be the summer of 2002. So she's always in little shorts and tank tops. Oh and between every take, <laughs> the costume department is like throwing blankets on her. I mean, it was <laughs> really hard. It was very difficult. But she was always on, spot on, just doing take after take if she needed to. She was wonderful. Wow. Tell me a little bit about the premise of the movie, because isn't it a, a story about that had to do with 9-11? Well, 9-11 is a backdrop. That's the timetable. Okay. So what happened, the book, which is really interesting, is, as Brendan mentioned, it's a long letter. It says, Dear Zoe, comma, on the cover, and the last two words on page 189 is Love Tess, mm -hmm. um, the main character. She's writing a letter a year after 9-11, as the one-year anniversary is approaching, She's writing a little letter to her little half-sister Zoe, who was three years old, telling her about the year that she and her family's gone through because little Zoe doesn't know what's happened because she left us on the morning of 9-11. You don't know how, you don't know why. It's one of the mysteries of the movie. All you know is that Tess is very upset about it. She also feels a little bit guilty because you get a sense that maybe she thinks she had something to do with what happened to Zoe. 
And she's also extremely angry that the world is obsessed about 9-11 instead of being focused on her dead little yeah. sister. Right. And no it's a really about. interesting setup that the author came up with of contrasting a very personal private loss mm -hmm. potentially being overshadowed by larger global events. So that's the setup of the story, the structure, and that was the book, was basically this, this letter. It's the construct. So what we did with the movie is we really opened it up to go on the journey with her. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't just have her narrating a letter, you know, no. for two hours. That would be a little boring. Right, so instead... <laughs> no matter how cool the She letter. truly does go on a version of the hero's journey. Initially, her mom and stepdad, they live in a very nice part of town, not what you saw in the clip, um, they are completely shut down because of what happened. They've lost their, their littlest girl. There's also a six-year-old. So Tess is left with the, not only the, the loss, but also the burden of playing mom and dad to her other half-sister. And she ultimately can't take it anymore after several months go by. And that all happens in just a few minutes, the beginning of the movie. And she leaves home. She runs away. To which she body. also feels yeah. terrible about because she's abandoning the six-year-old. Mm -hmm. But she runs off to her biological dad's. She really doesn't she have much of a relationship with. She never had a great relationship with, but she has nowhere else to go. And the beauty of the movie is it's really about these three characters. It's, it's her with her biological dad and then the sort of charming juvenile delinquent guy next yeah. door. <laughs> And Which I kind of like. Oh, that's, that's adorable. He's amazing. <laughs> First acting job. He's never yeah, acted. He's, never. A, he's a rapper from Chicago. Yeah. We found Our him Our director on the found him online. <laughs> oh she was like, hot rappers in Chicago. Yeah. Oh, he's cute. No acting experience. He was amazing. And their chemistry was amazing. Yeah. yeah. It really was incredible. So it's really these two guys kind who heal each provide other. her the space, the support, you know, to effectively heal, not permanently heal, obviously you never really heal from that, mm -hmm. but to be able to deal with, honestly, you know, her emotions and it, you just going along with that ride and it's a really, really lovely story. That's awesome. And it's very inspiring. So Jessica Capshaw is also yes, in she, it. She, she plays, plays her mother. She's okay. the mom. Yeah, she, right. she's great. She was definitely cold a lot too. <laughs> like, I'm freezing. But she lives in LA. <laughs> Southern California. It was an it was an unusually yes. mid late fall in Pittsburgh. I can tell you, growing Jessica up, Jessica was. You can get some very nice weather, but mm -hmm. it was. We had our first day of filming, October fifteenth, was lovely, seventy degrees. Yep. We were at the local amusement park, which figures in the story. The very next day, the temperature dropped twenty degrees, yeah. and it never recovered. No. And it was. Cold. And the day that it snowed, we were on the sound stage doing the one day on the sound stage. Mm -hmm. We thought, okay, well, this is good, snowing outside, so we're inside. The next day, the snow cleared up. We had a snow scene outside, so we had to create snow. I mean, it's like, what's going on here? <laughs> so we, we fun. couldn't catch a break. Right? It was a tough. It was a tough. It's a 30, 30, 30 day shoot. It went, but it's, it was really, really smooth. It was. We had an amazing crew and a great director. So everybody became a family for a very short amount of time. Well, it looks amazing. And when is it going to be screened here? Saturday, in Saturday morning, this February twenty sixth at ten a.m. at the Performing Arts Center. Okay, great. And we really hope people come out and see it. And how can be people? the first people to come out and see it. <laughs> and how can people? So nobody, it hasn't been seen before. It's so never been seen before. In a theater. In a theater is, with live people. This is the first Yay. in theater performance. And tickets, we understand, are available right yep. up to last minute. Okay. So nobody needs to worry about the fact no. they don't have tickets yet. You never know until people see this. They may just run out. And <laughs> right. <laughs> That's it, I, right. Right. I will greet yeah. everybody personally. <laughs> Well, awesome. Well, thank you both thank for you. being with us. It's so glad. Thank you for just driving you. in and yep. driving straight to the interview. I appreciate that. And that's why I had my hat on and my scarf. It was cold in the car. <laughs> well, it's so nice to meet you and look forward to seeing you after your film. Well, and have so. a wonderful festival. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Thanks. And we will be back with more from the Sedona International Film Festival after this.